last class we discussed about uh, the integrity test what we have to carry out, but if there is a damage to port structure mainly this damage is uh, due to the ships which are uh, not go going in their own path it deviates loses control and hit generally mooring dolphins it hit and afterwards there will be some damage to the piles one or two piles, but we have to do some integrity test to carry out the response mainly the frequency response that we have done for three projects which I will explain. The next study is uh, we provide Tyrod as one of the supporting member and we have measured the Tyrod forces just to see what we have considered analytically is what is being realized this is done at Paradip port trust. Then while doing construction for a bulk berth in Jawaharlal Nehru port trust some of the piles have failed due to wave action some of them have got tilted. So to find out the reason we have done some studies. The first study is due to a ship hitting the dolphin because it has lost control. Second is to study the forces experimentally on a tie rod and compare with the analytical studies. The third one is the failure of uh, some of the piles during a cyclonic condition. First we will see Marmugawa port. This shows the aerial view of the Marmugawa port. We have a very small breakwater here. This is called as a semi natural harbor. There are some hills which are protecting the harbor basin. Here we have one floating dry dock. This is one set of berths, this is another set of berths. And here we are seeing three dolphins. One more dolphin is there on further this side. When the vessels are coming, and the berth is not uh, free. In that case, they will anchor the vessels for a small period of time. Small period means maybe a day or sometimes even two. Instead of waiting outside, they will be anchoring the vessels here. Once the berth is free, then the vessel will come and berth and take loading or unloading. See, when one of the vessels was trying to go out like this, it has gone and hit one of the dolphins here and it has uh, undergone some damage. So we normally do one uh, study that is called as a frequency response study. I will explain about that. These are called as bollards which are used to tie the vessel what you are seeing here. This is a tug bar which is uh, controlling the vessel because when the vessel is entering the harbor you will be not be having any the engine will be stopped. So, the vessel only will push the, the tug only will push the vessel. So, these are tied together this is how the mooring dolphins are used to tie the vessel. For example, if there is a vessel here it will be tied between this point and this point. These dolphins generally have a RCC deck and they will be supported on piles. You can see some uh, discoloration here this is the biofouling which takes place they use a liner that liner is getting corroded that is also you are seeing. This one side of the dolphin which is not damaged we see the other side of the dolphin it has got completely damaged the steel framework has gone down some of the reinforcement which is coming from the deck to the pile has got bent and uh, there will be a, a discontinuity of the reinforcement. For this type of study what we use is a tugboat. These tugboats are used to hit the dolphin like this so that the dolphin uh, undergoes certain oscillations and we measure the oscillation. So this is uh, one time series of oscillation which is measured. So again we use acceleration pickup to get the time series then we have a amplifier then a recorder. What we are measuring in the x axis is the time in seconds 
y axis is the measured signal generally in volts or you can convert the volts in acceleration in meter per second square also. So, once the dolphin uh, is hit by the tugboat and the tugboat goes away then the dolphin oscillates that oscillation is picked up by the signal and it dies down after a certain period of cycles may be after 10 cycles or 15 cycles from this crest to this crest is one cycle this is called as trough this trough to trough is another cycle. So, this is uh, one cycle we have we have taken the measurement steady signal after 25 seconds after the tug has hit and it is it is a free vibration test. So, after the tug has hit we are measuring it this is uh, one of the dolphin which has got damaged this is the test number 1 we repeat the test at least 3 tests we carry out we are measuring the frequency that is 1.429 hertz and the period is 0.7 hertz. How to calculate is the time taken between these two successive crests is 0.7 seconds. So, what we do is we there are this one cycle this second cycle this is third cycle. So, for 3 cycles you find out what is the time taken divided by 3 then it will give the natural period of the system. So, from this point is 26.5 this point may be 27.2 difference between 27.2 minus 26.5 is 0.7 seconds 1 by 0.7 is this hertz. This is the first test which we have carried out again we repeat the test when we did the second test also we get a different type of signal, but the period is really the same the acceleration levels were higher if you see the previous slide it was only 0.2 whereas here it is 0.8 the accelerations are uh, slightly uh, very high compared to the previous test, but the period remains almost the same. This is for the damaged dolphin. What will be the frequency for a undamaged dolphin? Uh, what will be the frequency for the undamaged dolphin? Will it be more than this or less than this? Question is clear now we have measured the frequency <coughs> this frequency will be more or less for a undamaged dolphin. So, you do not know the answer so we I will tell you the background to this. So, if you see here there are a number of dolphins four dolphins one of the dolphin has got damaged the other dolphin is undamaged both are identical because they are designed for the same forces. So, now we have to find out what happens to the frequency for which we should first find out what is the equation of motion. This is called as free vibration, free damped vibration equation. What is m? What is m? m is the mass. What is k? Huh? What is it? Stiffness. you can write x is equal to some constant a into sin or cos omega t where omega is the frequency. So, x double dot will be minus omega square a cos omega t. So, if you do the differentiation x dot will be omega a sin omega t and x double dot will be minus omega square a cos omega t right. So, if you substitute this uh, in this expression assuming the damping is 0 this is the damping term, As, but damping exists in our analysis, but assuming it to be 0 then we will have the equation m into minus omega square a cos omega t plus k 
a cross omega t equal to 0. So, this a cross omega t and a cross omega t is here. So, we can remove that. So, what we will get is k is equal to omega square m omega square is equal to root of omega is equal to root of k by m where k is the stiffness m is the mass the unit for omega is radians per second. This omega is nothing but 2 pi by t which is a natural period f is equal to nothing but 1 by t this f is given in hertz t is given in seconds this is clear to you for a free vibration of a, any structure this is damped you will have three terms first is the inertial term second is the damping term third one is the stiffness term. So, this gives the m into acceleration c into velocity k into deflection which is equal to 0. If we assume c is 0 then the equation is m x double dot plus k x equal to 0 x equal to you can write a cos omega t or a sin omega t x double dot will become minus omega square a cos omega t. You substitute in this equation find out omega square omega square is equal to k by m and omega is equal to root of k by m period if you want once omega is known t is equal to 2 pi by omega once t is known f is equal to 1 by 2 1 by t okay. This is a t is called as the natural period of the system first mode of vibration. This uh, omega when you talk it will have damage that is equal to root of k d by m omega undamaged is equal to root of k undamaged by m. I am putting the mass same because mass will be the same for the both the damaged and undamaged dolphin. What happens to the stiffness? Which stiffness will be more? Huh? Undamaged stiffness will be higher. So, then what happens to the frequency? Undamaged will be more than the damage. So, omega of undamaged should be more than omega of damage. So, now we will see whether we are getting that or not. Okay. We have uh, fortunately two dolphins. So, this is for the damaged dolphin frequency is 1.429 1.429 this is for the damaged dolphin for an undamaged dolphin the frequency should be higher right this is for the undamaged dolphin you can see the frequency is 1.923 hertz right this higher period will be lower because the stiffness of the undamaged dolphin is higher this is one uh, we have given the dolphin has uh, four faces this is from the north side this is from the west side there is a small difference here for the dolphin that is uh, undamaged dolphin this is 2.083. So, we have a table which shows the dolphin number 3 is damaged dolphin number 4 is undamaged we have done two tests for each dolphin damaged dolphin the frequency is lower undamaged dolphin the frequency is higher because undamaged dolphin the stiffness will be very high right this is what we have measured. Now, what we are going to do is we are going to repair this dolphin then we will take again the measurement at that time the damaged dolphin should be close to the undamaged dolphin then we can say that the structure is in good condition. Right. The stiffness what we are talking is the lateral stiffness that is the first mode of vibration. Now, we will go to next uh, structure that is at Kandla port. So, this is the gulf of Kutch and if you enter like this through this Sogal channel this is the Sogal channel if you enter 
this is the Kandla Creek right here we have lot of berths one stretch a very long berth this is about a 2 kilometer long berth that is there then these are the oil jetties 1, 2, 3 and 4 when the vessel was just like the previous case here also when the vessel is entering the channel if the berth is not ready they were mooring the vessel somewhere here on its own ship mooring and when it was trying to go out to berth at some berth it has gone and hit one of the dolphin here right this dolphin it has hit when it was trying to go out. So, we will see a video you are seeing the dolphin in a very bad condition <laughs> what are the damages in this dolphin what happened to this pile is completely damaged you are seeing lot of water going out this is the tidal creek where the water is going out normally the dolphin height is very high because uh, the tidal range in Kandla is more than 4 meters. So, because of that reason the top level is very high they have done some repair because of corrosion that is why it is low going like this here the piles are both vertical as well as inclined pile the ship has come and hit this pile directly that pile is again uh, damaged it has fallen down after some time and here also there is some damage. So, for this type of damage you see the current speed or how much it is coming the current velocity which is coming near the pile if you see there is lot of uh, water that is taking place. Since there is so much damage to the structure we did not do any frequency test <laughs> very clear that the damage is very high and we cannot repair the structure simply we have to put some additional piles all around and then strengthen the structure. So, we did not do any study for that ok. The third one is in Chennai port. So, we have three docks here one is called as a Jawahar dock somewhere here next is called as a Ambedkar dock where inside here then we have a dock called as a Bharati dock. This is the breakwater eastern breakwater northern breakwater then this is your southern breakwater and this is your outram the ship is coming through the entrance channel and then there is a training circle. When one of the vessel was trying to go out like this it has to go like this. So, when the vessel was trying to go out like this it has lost the control and has gone and hit this dolphin. One of the reason it has hit the dolphin is this is very close to the entrance channel. So, it has come and hit the dolphin and there was some damage this has happened more than maybe 15 years or 16 years back. So, this is how the dolphin is we have four corner vertical piles then we have racker piles inclined piles three in each face one of the pile vertical pile has got damage I will show it the photograph in the next slide. In order to repair this pile we found that it is better to put additional four piles and integrate with the deck system. So, that the new dolphin after the four piles it will be in good condition actually they did not repair this dolphin what we have suggested what they have done is this dolphin was damaged they put one more dolphin there were two dolphins here one dolphin here and one dolphin here they put one more dolphin here and then they used it for purpose they did not want to repair because the shipping agency will give the money for constructing a new dolphin. So, they gone in for that construction of new dolphin normally the ship size is defined by dead weight tonnage the ship was 60,000 DWT and we can visibly see the deflection of the dolphin. So, the center line has deflected by about 687 millimeters in one direction and 356 millimeter in the other direction there is a twist of the dolphin that is the top surface of the dolphin has got twisted by about 3 degrees. There is no visible damage what we have seen the earlier slides and all where the dolphin is very strong. Do you notice any damage in this any problem in this pile 
this is a pile the deck system are you noticing anything hmm nothing you are noticing <laughs> what is this there is a bulge that means there is a buckling of the steel liner you are able to see the bulge you know there is a bulge here in both the directions only for a small distance this bulge is mainly due to buckling of the liner plate if you remove this you will see some crushing of concrete inside here also we have done the damaged and undamaged dolphin both the x and the y direction we have done three trials next direction three trials in the y direction we have got average 2.25 for damage 2.25 for damage for undamaged 2.65 in one direction and 2.52 in another direction i don't know this is a coincidence or otherwise damaged dolphin in both the directions generally we get the same result earlier also i have shown same results we are getting in two direction whereas undamaged dolphin there is small change where some soil will be different and things like that so here also the undamaged dolphin the stiffness is high so the frequency is higher here so if you want to find out the ratio between the stiffness of the undamaged to damaged dolphin it is the ratio of the frequency and this gives about 72% in one direction and 80% in the other direction so you can also quantify what is the reduction in stiffness reduction in stiffness is square of the frequency ratios so here it is 72% another is 80% this is required to reduce the stiffness when you do the reanalysis suppose one pile which is buckled that pile will give the stiffness is only 70% and redo the analysis and when we do the analysis uh, also we get the frequency and that also should match then when you put four piles then this uh, damaged dolphin the stiffness will increase and the frequency also should increase to 2.65 that we have seen and it has become all right but they have gone for some other work so we have to repair the damages at pile cap and pile interface provide four additional piles and we have to make them integral with the existing dolphin by suitably extending the pile cap and again we have to carry out load test by pulling the mooring dolphin against each other up to 200 tons it is designed for a mooring pull of 200 tons so we have to apply this load and monitor the performance as a final confirmation of the restoration to its rated capacity these are the sequence we have told but they didn't do it they built another dolphin since the insurance company is paying the money they have done but that cost will be at least 10 uh, times more than the repair cost if you want to repair so this again giving uh, uh, in detail opening of the joint between the concrete piles and the deck slab treatment of the corner pile exhibiting compression bulge falling and cracking of concrete in the corners of the deck slab and the top surface the level was not there because it has got tilted so you have to level it and we provide four additional piles and then connect them and uh, we provide the same founding level as the earlier vertical piles and we want to also provide steel liner up to the bottom like raker see earlier what they have done is the raker pile for construction purpose the liner will go up to the founding level because the bore hole will collapse for a raker pile if the liner is not there whereas vertical pile they have stopped so that is why there is some damage which is observed so we thought we will take the liner right up to the founding level this is the layout of uh, paradip port here we have what is known as the two breakwaters the entrance channel this is called as a lagoon harbor what is shown in dark blue color is the proposal what they want to do in phases this is existing they have a iron ore berth and uh, again there is another uh, berth for uh, iron ore transport this is called as a general cargo berth 
So, this general cargo berth we have done some tie rod measurement which I will explain. This berth is about 200 meter long and 17 meter wide. This consists of a diaphragm wall which is about 1.1 meter thick and there is a dead man diaphragm wall which is 0.75 meter thick. We want to find out what will be the load distribution between the piles and the diaphragm wall. This shows the layout of the structure. This is called as the front diaphragm wall. We have two rows of piles. We have a dead man diaphragm wall. This dead man diaphragm wall is connected to the main diaphragm wall by a tie rod. Then we have very deep main beam. These piles are at every 4 meter center to center in the longitudinal direction. So, every 4 meter we have this main beam. On top of the diaphragm wall, we have what is known as a coping beam. Here we place the fender and here we provide the bollard and we here we have put some precast longitudinal beams over which we will put the slab. The dead man diaphragm wall, the main diaphragm wall are connected by a tie rod. This tie rod uh, diameter is 80 mm and this is kept inside a GI pipe which is 125 millimeter diameter. The gap between the GI pipe and the anchor rod is filled with bitumen so that the corrosion effect is not there in the tie rod. The thickness of the main diaphragm wall is 1100 millimeters. Thickness of the this is called as a dead man diaphragm wall is 750 mm. Here we are seeing some cut in the uh, cut shown in this uh, drawing. This is to show that this is not drawn to scale. Actually this uh, length of the tie rod is much more than what it is shown. The dead man diaphragm wall is not so close. It is far away from this. To accommodate in the drawing we are uh, we are showing it like this right. The top level is uh, 4.85. Dead man diaphragm wall starts from plus 3 it goes up to minus 9 whereas uh, the main diaphragm wall the cut off level is 0 0 from there it goes down up to minus 21. The construction procedure is like this we will have the soil filled on both the sides they construct the structure then they start dredging this is how they do the construction procedure this is not done in the open sea it is done in the land surface. Lagoon harbor means is called as a lagoon harbor the whole area is a land mass. Now, this area is a land mass. So, what they do is they do the construction then they remove the soil by dredging same way here also they build the structure then they remove the soil by dredging that is what they have done. So, clear now this is uh, the construction procedure. Now, there are piles connected to this by a main beam the dead man wall is connected by a tie rod to the dead man diaphragm wall. When you are removing the soil from here to here as you go here initially they do up to minus 10.5 and finally to minus 11.5. As they are dredging the soil what will happen to the main diaphragm wall? Diaphragm wall will deflect as the diaphragm wall is trying to deflect the tie rod will bring it back to the position it will take the tension and through the tension it has to pull this dead man wall also. So, they assumed about 60 tons or 600 kilo Newton is the force in the tie rod. But uh, when we saw this structure since the pile is a very large diameter pile 1000 mm dia we have told them that this, uh, this 600 kilo Newton will not be mobilized on the tie rod the load will be shared between the dead man wall as well as the pile is it clear to you. They assume there would not be any load in the pile lateral load all the load they assumed it will go to the dead man wall that is why we decided to do some measurement on the tie rod forces. The objective is clear to you we are assuming that the whole lateral load due to earth pressure will go to the dead man wall but actually it will be shared between the pile as well as the dead man wall. We want to find out how much is the sharing. 
this measurement has been published in one of the journal American Society of Civil Engineering, Journal of Waterways, Port and Harbour Engineering. This uh, tie rods are uh, provided at uh, closer intervals and these are the piles which are at 4 meters center to center. This is the main, main diaphragm wall is somewhere here, dead man diaphragm wall is somewhere at this end and at 3 locations we have measured the, these are the 3 rods which are uh, uh, subjected to some measurement. So, at the end of the tie rod what we have done is we have put some uh, load cell which will measure the tension in the tie rod, it is a strain gauge type. Then we have uh, two nuts which are connected to this. What we do is we put two hydraulic jacks each of 30 ton capacity because this is designed for 60 tons of tie force. So, these are the two jacks which are given as the 30 ton capacity. So, what we do is we just uh, apply the load of 30 tons each, uh, we will apply such a way that uh, till the tie rod becomes loose we will apply the load. So, that we will get the initial reading, then we will release the jack. So, that we will get initial reading and final reading, because dredging will take place after 6 months or 8 months after the construction is over. That time we should need the initial reading and final reading. To get the initial reading, we will transfer the load from the tie rod to the jacks and then again transfer the load from the jack to the tie rod that is why this measurement is arrangement is made. You cannot take the initial reading and then take the final reading after 6 months because this place will be filled with water that initial reading and this reading will not be the same. Is it clear you cannot take the initial reading today and come back after 6 months and take the final reading you would not get the reading properly. So, for that reason we have made this arrangement. So, here you can see the details of the load cell to have a concentric load transfer we have made this ball and socket joint also. So, the load will be transferred here these are the coupling nuts this is a tie rod which is coming from the 750 thick diaphragm wall. There is a machine plate here so that this from this we can take the jack. Then what we did is we carried out two studies analytical study in one study we assume the dead man diaphragm wall is not deflecting that is it is rigid. Another study we assume that the dead man wall is flexible that means the dead man wall also will deflect that is modeled by springs. And again we consider the active wedge behind the main diaphragm wall to do the analysis. So, we will see the discretization here. This is the finite element analysis which is carried out. This is your main diaphragm wall first row of pile, second row of pile. Here we have the dead man wall. This dead man wall is assumed to be fixed in one analysis. This is the center line of the beam plus 3. This is the level of the tie rod plus 1.3. This beam is very deep. The depth of the beam is 500 by 3650 millimeter. 3650 millimeter means it is the height of this room. 3.65 meter that is the depth of the beam. That is why we said this beam will transfer the load to the piles also. I was talking about the active wedge, this is the active wedge behind the main diaphragm wall. So, when you have an active wedge behind the main diaphragm wall, the spring will start somewhere from here only. Here the spring may, may have to start uh, actually the, this active wedge is drawn here to take only this and uh, there are some uh, possibilities some forces will transfer here just uh, above this point, but uh, we can take from 16.25 also this this is a point of research where you have to take this active edge line from here. It can be either taken from the dredge line or it can be taken from the point of contraflexure or one third distance between the dredge level to founding level. So, that is why I mark the line if you take the active edge line from here from the dredge level then you can assume the springs like this and this spring will go slightly more this is the other spring. The next slide you will see that we have put the dead man wall here and then we have modeled this by truss element. The distance between the main wall and the dead man wall is about 30 meters 
this is also calculated because there should not be a line of influence between the dead man wall and the main wall that is why we have done this. Now we can see the comparison of result we were expecting around 600 kilo Newton that is what is shown in the analytical design which is done originally assuming that tie rod only take the lateral force neglecting the piles. The tie rod will take 600 kilo Newton and the beams will take about 0 kilo Newton this is what is originally assumed. But finally, when you measure there are three tie rods which are measured the load taken by them is 125, 129 and 73 only one fifth to one seventh of the load what it is supposed to take and we did not measure what is the load on the beam because it is not possible to measure the load on the beam we measured only the tie rod and we have done two analysis one is assuming the dead man wall to be rigid another is assuming the dead man wall to be flexible. So, this flexible 130 kilo Newton compares well with the measured values that is the dead man wall is not assumed to remain rigid it will also deflect along with that. Then uh, the beams here it is taking 249 kilo Newtons that means the sum of these two is about uh, 370 whereas we assume it is rigid it is very close to 400 but what is originally assumed is 600 that is the earth pressure due to earth pressure the load transferred to the tie rod is assumed as 600 kilo Newton whereas actually the lateral force transferred is only about 400 kilo Newton if the uh, dead man diaphragm wall is rigid and it is close to 370 kilo Newton if it is assumed to be flexible. Okay, this uh, analysis is what is carried out but you can actually infer this result by doing a very simple analysis. So, we do in uh, second year or third year or civil engineering course what is known as a consistent deformation method I will not go into this details you can refer some studies and then some textbook and see that. Uh, but somewhat uh, similar to this we can have this suppose this is very important there is a tie rod when the force is 0 the elongation will be 0 when there is no tensile force in the tie rod the elongation will be 0. Suppose the force is 600 kilo Newton what will be the elongation there is a tie rod which is subjected to a tensile force of 600 kilo Newton what will be the elongation what is the formula to calculate the elongation hmm? PL by A so PL by A what is P here P is 600 L is 30 meter A is uh, the area of the tie rod E is x modulus of steel material area of the tie rod is pi d square by 4 diameter of the tie rod is 80 millimeter 80 millimeter L is 30 meter. So, you can substitute in consistent units and find out what is the elongation required ok. But the holes all the structures are connected the diaphragm wall the main beam the piles they are all interconnected tie rod is connected to the main diaphragm wall and dead man diaphragm wall when this is elongating for 600 kilo Newton uh, I do not know the value suppose this is going by about 60 millimeter let us say then what happens is when the main wall moves beam also moves by 60 millimeter the pile also will move by 60 millimeter. So, the pile when it has to move by 60 millimeter suppose there is a pile and you want to pull it for 60 millimeter then you have to apply lot of force 
that is what is transferred that 249 kilo Newton going by the beam is because the beam has to pull the pile also. So that is how the load share takes place is it clear the elongation of the tie rod plus the displacement of elongation of the tie rod should be equal to the displacement of the beams which are subjected to load at the top these two should match then only the load transfer will take place. So because the displacement is to be same you have to find out for the displacement what will be the elongation in the tie rod for the same displacement you can find out what is the load on the pile suppose there is a pile here the last row of pile the bed level is here the founding level is here and this is pulled by some force P there is some soil here which is resisting this. So the deflection of the pile which is 1000 millimeter dia can be calculated by doing a beam on elastic foundation theory you can find out how much load is required to deflect this by this will go like this this deflection let us say about 12 millimeter the elongation also 12 millimeter will be the same okay. There are two piles this is the last row of pile there is another pile here but this is on the active edge the spring is here like this and here also you apply the load P but here also this has to deflect by the same elongation of 12 mm. But this first row of pile load and second row of pile load will not be the same which will be more P1 or P2 because the first pile is in the active wedge the deflection should be the same first pile also should deform by 12 millimeter second pile also should deform by 12 millimeter the tie rod also should deform by 12 millimeter all of them will have the same deformation right for 12 millimeter elongation the load taken by the tie rod can be calculated P is equal to AE delta by delta L by L the other calculation is difficult that is for the pile but the question what I am asking is the beam is transferring 249 kilo Newton this 249 kilo Newton will be shared by the first row of pile and second row of pile will it be equal huh? yes sir no no which will take more load first pile or second pile huh? is wrong P2 will take more P2 will take more because active wedge moves away from uh, the, there is no active wedge for this the spring is right from the bed level there is an active wedge there is no resistance for the pile here. So 249 kN this P1 may take 119 or maybe uh, 89 I will put this will take about uh, 160 because this pile is having lot of stiffness because the support is right from the bed level whereas this support is much below the bed level. So the, if you want you need a small lo, smaller load than this to deflect it by 12 millimeter because this is the free cantilever length whereas the free cantilever length is only very small for this. So this is how we have to have some analysis of loads that are uh, taking place but you can really get the details when you do an analysis and get this information. The results of the study compares well with the force measurement. The lateral load sharing between the dead man and vertical piles this depends on the pile rigidity, soil stiffness, flexibility of tire, dead man and tie rod. The assumption of transfer of lateral loads to the tie rod only in the presence of rigid deck and large diameter vertical piles leads to this is very important it leads to uneconomical as well as unsafe design uneconomical means you are designing the tie rod for 600 kilo Newton whereas it is taking only one fourth of that value less than one fourth that means you are putting more tie rods instead of putting tie rods at uh, one and a half meters center to center they can put even at four meters center to center that means 
the, the, this uh, number of tie rods can be reduced. Similarly, the dead man diaphragm wall also design can be reduced. This is more important that is unsafe, which is unsafe we are assuming the pile is not taking the load. If you assume the pile is not taking the load, pile will crack because you are not designing it for that bending moment and the uh, reinforcement you are not providing then the whether you design the pile for lateral load or not the pile is taking the load <laughs> it will crack. But actually they have put over design both pile as well as the <laughs> tie rod it is not cracking whatever minimum reinforcement we have provided 0 0.8 percent it is found to be sufficient to take this load. We have talk, talked about 249 kilo Newton right actually we have tested a single pile for 450 kilo Newton it has taken the load. The capacity of a single pile 1000 mm dia is about 450 kilo Newton. Both the pile put together only is 250 kilo Newton here. With the vertical piles, they have designed only for vertical load. If they are not designing for lateral load, they may crack. Once they crack, the reinforcement will get corroded and failure will take place. So, what is the inference? This based on the studies, we have designed another berth which was modified. We have completely eliminated the tie rod, we have removed the dead man also you provide only one more row of pile. So, at that time the cost saving was about 20 percent and another advantage is when you want to put the dead man wall you want to put the tie rod it takes more time also time is money. So, we have saved the construction period from 24 months to 18 months because we did not have to provide the dead man diaphragm wall as well as the tie rod instead we have to put one more row of pile with that we are able to have substantial savings in cost and time. Time is money because 18 months you complete the birth and start operation that 6 months period you can collect lot of revenue also that is how it becomes very essential to have the to save the time. This is a very interesting failure what we are going to see this is normally uh, is uh, not expected that is uh, failure of the piles during construction. Many structures which are failing they are failing during construction period because of faulty design or construction. So, I have shown in the first uh, case study damage to the dolphins this damage has taken place because of accident. Accident means the ship is not going through its own path, it loses control or the captain is drunk, <laughs> he is not piloting the vessel properly, the tugboat is not using properly, it is an accident. That accident can happen any time, because of that accident the force coming onto the structure is more than the design force because of that it fails because the structure is subject to a force more than the design force that can happen any time. Whereas, if there is a fault in the design or fault in the construction 99.99 percent the failure take place just during construction or slightly after construction is completed one or two months after construction is completed this is what is happening. So, you should be very careful during construction and uh, if there is no failure taking place during construction or just after construction mostly the structure will be very stable there may not be any failure to the structure most of the cases. This is what happened at Jawaharlal Nehru port trust this is one of the most modern port in India this was done somewhere in uh, between 86 to 90. This is the biggest container terminal as on today in India this is handling about uh, 4 million TEU that is 20 foot equivalent units 4 million TEU. It is a it is a this uh, cargo share is about 70 percent of Indian container terminal is in uh, 
Jawaharlal Nehru Port Trust. This is during construction of a bulk berth, but subsequently this bulk berth also is now converted into a container berth. You see here there are a lot of floating equipments here, there is no access to the land. These are the piles which are driven and then they put the concrete deck. These are the liners which are driven by another vessel. So, the construction is like this, there is one floating barge here doing the deck construction. There are some support vessels to transfer the cement and the concrete. There is another floating barge with a crane facility to drive the liner. The liner is driven by one floating barge, the concrete is done by another floating barge. They are continuously driving the liners here like this, right. About 50 percent of the liners are concreted, 50 percent of the liner are driven. On one particular day, some of the liners have fallen down and some of the concreted piles somewhere here which is not connected with the deck, here it is connected with the deck that is also fallen down. It is during construction, the construction company has told that we will do the we will whatever liner which has got tilted we will remove it and uh, redo it. The pile which is fallen down also they said they will remove the pile it has fallen down <laughs> completely fallen down and they will replace it. But the administration is worried whether the piles which are already driven with the concrete deck which has not fallen whether it is intact or otherwise. They also want to know why some piles have fallen down, some piles have got tilted liner tilting or liner falling they are not very much worried there are two concrete piles which have completely got damaged. So, they want to know the reason. So, here it is much more difficult to find out the reason. So, we have to do three different types of studies this is very important whenever somebody wants to design any structure if he is an expert in structural engineering that alone is not sufficient. We have three disciplines which are very important whenever you do the design of structures. One is you have to estimate the forces on the structure, this is hydrodynamic forces. Then we need the structural engineering. to find out how the forces are transferred to the pile then we need also need the foundation engineering. This port and arbor structure itself is a specialized field and we should study this three aspect one is what is the force coming onto the structure due to hydrodynamic forces. These forces can be due to wave this can be due to current, this also can be due to wind and this may act alone or this may act together, this may act in two different directions also. Suppose you I will assume that this water bottle is the pile, wave can come from this side, current can come from this side and wind can come from another side. So, these three can be from different directions that is also there and the water level varies okay water level varies with reference to the tide that also will change then the structural engineering uh, this is this is uh, not sufficient if you know what will be the capacity of the structure how many days are required for the concrete to obtain the strength hmm? Suppose we say M30, M30 means what? What is meant by M30? Huh? Not 30 days. What is M30? Grade of concrete. What is 30? Compressive huh? strength of what? Concrete means what? Concrete. Characteristic will come later. Compressive strength of what? Hardened concrete. Huh? Hardened 
Third and concrete are what size? Huh? What size of the cube? You have to take a cube. Yeah. We have to take a cube of 150 by 150 by 150. In US, they take a cylinder. This is a characteristic compressive strength of a cube after 28 days of strength. Okay, this is called as a compressive strength. Characteristic strength comes because of the standard deviation and all. I will not go into detail. That is after 28 days, this strength will be M30. That is what we assume for the design purpose. What happens to the strength of concrete after one year? Will it be more or less? After five years? Generally, after one year, the strength increases to 20 percent. Afterwards, it remains almost constant, it does not increase further. But if there is some chemical attack or some chloride attack, the concrete strength will come down, right. Age factor is there. 28 days if you have M30, after one year you may have 36 kilo Pascal, 36 mega Pascal. M30 means compressive strength of concrete cube is equal to 30 mega Pascal. But this failure of the pile has taken place before 28 days, not after 28 days. That means you should know the behavior of the concrete from 0 to 28 days. So, in structural engineering we always do the design after 28 days that is not sufficient. We should know the behavior from 0 to 28 days. Then this uh, foundation engineering generally it is the there are two capacity of the pile one is the structural capacity another is the foundation capacity. See when you apply a lateral load on the pile if the structural failure takes place the concrete and reinforcement will fail. Foundation capacity failing means the soil will yield and the pile will fall down. Concrete will be intact is it clear? The lateral load what you are applying to a pile it will be transferred to the soil if the structural capacity of the pile is adequate. If the foundation capacity is not adequate suppose there is a pile it is a free standing pile this is your bed level this is your water level you apply a load like this suppose you put the pile only here you stop the pile here there is no sufficient embedment depth then the whole pile will fall down because of inadequate soil capacity. Suppose you put the pile very small very small diameter pile instead of putting 1000 mm you put 150 mm and apply the load the pile will somewhere crack like this and pile will fall down is it clear structural failure means the pile concrete will fail and foundation failure means the pile whole pile will fall down because we do not provide sufficient embedment depth this is your embedment depth. In this particular case both the failures are observed foundation <laughs> failure also is there structural failure also is there. This is the place which is from where we take all these barges and other things. So, I am sitting here <laughs> and I am observing the two piles which have fallen down. These are the two piles which have fallen down this is the liner this is the concrete some of the piles were uh, bent like this and here uh, there is no bending in the reinforcement it remains the same but some of them have got snapped you have seen the failure this is a combination of both structural and failure foundation failure structural failure means uh, it has cracked here that is why there is a structural failure foundation failure means uh, the cause for the structural failure is due to foundation failure which I will explain later. You can see a close up view of this uh, piles how it has bent and how the concrete has got damaged. So, this is how uh, the uh, failure has taken place here we have marked there is extraction 
of the reinforcement it is straight here this is bent here this is also bent and here there is an extraction there is a, a straight uh, rupture there is a straight pile here there is a tension rupture here that means this side of the pile is subjected to tension this side is subjected to compression at the founding level the surface of the concrete is something like this with this the pile has fallen down and uh, below this it is still in the foundation itself it is in the soil itself some portion has fallen down still some portion of the pile is below. Uh, this uh, thickness of soft marine clay there are some piles which have fallen down some pile which has not fallen down you have to find out the reason why some of them have fallen down some of them have not fallen down. This is mainly based on your uh, soil profile this water level is this your bed level is something like this then we have uh, some uh, level going like this this is soft clay then we have weathered rock then it goes like the, then we may have a good rock like this it is there. So, this depth at places where the files have fallen down is about this depth I will take this is about 3.65 meter where the concrete file has fallen down where the liners have got tilted is about 2.72 meter where there is no failure that is taken place it is greater than 5 meter. So, here the piles have fallen here the piles have got tilted here the piles are intact what normally they do is they put a liner they stop the liner just when they touch the rock afterwards they will not take the liner into the rock. So, when there is a load this liner is right up to the top. So, when there is a load acting on this if this embedment depth is not sufficient due to the load because we have three stages of structural behavior of pile the first stage is only liner another is green concrete the third one is well set concrete. So, this is your structural behavior this embedment depth is your foundation capacity. So, we have three cases here only liner when there is no concrete inside embedment depth is smaller liner will tilt then you have a green concrete it does not attain its strength green concrete means you have the concrete going below this level so you have sufficient depth if this concrete what is going inside if it has attained well set this pile will not fail before it is attaining the strength and still it is in the green concrete stage then it may fail. Sometimes even if the depth is not sufficient what they have provided we have found even well set concrete will fail. So, the first thing what is this hydrodynamic forces so that only has to be estimated on that particular day the wind speed was 18 to 22 knots wave height is uh, there is a typing mistake here it is 0 0.8 to 2.2 meters high tide is plus 3.5 low tide is 1.49 normally we do not assume about 2.2 meter for the design purpose the wave height is uh, significantly higher. But there are certain uh, possibilities which they could have done to avoid the failure one of them is when you construct this liner like this they should brace the liner at the top suppose there are four rows of pile the cross section and number of rows in the longitudinal direction they have to connect the pile in both the directions in that case it will not act like a single cantilever pile 
that if they have done the failure could have been avoided because only during construction phase phase we found that design is insufficient because of the liner capacity not sufficient and the foundation capacity also being not sufficient they did not do that. So, we have to estimate the force due to this accurately assuming the direction of the current as I explained earlier then they have to estimate the lateral capacity of the soft clay then they also have to estimate this is how they have to estimate at sea bed level at bottom of the liner what is the moment of resistance all these things they have to calculate. Similarly, they have to find out the bars as you have seen in the photograph some of them have come out of the concrete that failure is because there is no adequate bond between the reinforcement bar and the concrete. The failure is not any other type of failure it is mainly the reinforcement is not having adequate bond strength with the concrete because the concrete is green. So, we can use this expression to calculate the bond strength. So, this is how we calculate for 1 day, 7 day, 14 day and 28 day what will be the bond strength, what will be the moment of resistance in kilo Newton meter. So, 153, 348, 428 and 500 actually on 28 days some of the piles are having adequate capacity against the load what is happening, but between 1 and 14 days the capacity is less. So, this is what you have to calculate the again we have to calculate the natural frequency which I have told earlier they have bra uh, see subsequent to the failure we ask them to brace all the piles. So, they have braced the piles parallel to the berth not perpendicular to the berth then parallel to the berth we have higher frequency because stiffness is higher omega is equal to root of k by m perpendicular to the berth the frequency was lower. This is for a larger diameter this 1200 pile which is unbraced. So, here omega is equal to root of k by m the stiffness is small because it is unbraced here frequency is higher because it is braced even if it is braced in the parallel direction perpendicular direction it has some effect whereas if it is not braced in both the directions the frequency is much smaller compared to this only one of of this bracing. So, you see the effect of bracing if you brace it the frequency increases that much stiffness it is giving. This is a smaller diameter pile braced in both the directions very close to uh, 1 uh, hertz and this is braced in two directions. 2.65 this increase is because of the diameter 760 diameter stiffness will be smaller compared to 1000 diameter. When it is freshly concreted stiffness will be lower you see this 1000 mm diameter pile these are all braced this 1000 mm diameter and 1000 mm diameter both are braced, but this is with fresh concrete whereas it is well set. So, when the concrete is fresh the frequency is lower the inference is when it is well set the frequency is almost two and a half times that of not well set. So, we have done an analysis also using a spring element and found out the first five frequencies and whatever for this particular pile what we have obtained by analysis is same as the measured frequency. So, the inference again I will tell the 1200 mm pile braced in the direction parallel to the berth is 2.03 hertz and is more than perpendicular to the berth 1.49 hertz and gives an indication of increased stiffness in the direction of bracing. The this, this second conclusion I will leave it because the third one is the measured acceleration level is more than 30 millimeter per second this corresponds to a deflection of nearly 20 millimeter. I last class I said if we integrate acceleration to velocity and velocity to deflection we have got the deflection of nearly 20 millimeter. This is not by pulling with tug boards and all the first slide I said we push with the tug and all here we did not do anything for making the measurement whatever waves were there at that time maybe half a meter or 1 meter 
that is giving sufficient uh, sensitivity to the accelerometers to measure. Even at that stage, this uh, deflection is 20 millimeter, not due to any pulling or pushing. It is just a natural environment gives so much of deflection. The conclusion: the embedment length of steel liner is found to be the critical parameter till the concrete attains the strength. Once the concrete attains the strength, full length of the embedment below the seabed level can be taken. Still, such time only the liner embedment is required. At the location of the failed piles, both tilted and uh, fallen, the thickness of soil overburden is very small. If we see that the rock is coming very close to the bed, we always have a impression that it is very good. Actually, it is not good for this type of construction because the embedment depth of liner becomes smaller and it fails. This in turn resulted in liner embedment not fully adequate to take care of the lateral forces during the setting period of the concrete resulting in a weakened zone of concrete at the bottom. So, when this uh, adequacy is not there the green concrete is subjected to lot of oscillation and it fails. The vibration response of freshly concreted piles and well set piles and piles braced in one and two direction indicate that the natural frequency of the freshly concreted pile is only about one third of the well set piles and is close to the wave frequency. This is another thing which we have found. So, when the freshly concreted pile because the mass is more omega is equal to root of k by m mass is more the frequency also comes down. Because of this reason the frequency is uh, only one third of the well set pile and this frequency is very close to the wave frequency that means you will have lot of resonance. The natural frequency of the pile in the braced direction is more than that in the unbraced direction. So, that shows the effectiveness of the bracing. So, we this type of piles in open sea it needs lot of care it should be ensured that the liners have adequate embedment into the soil. So, that in the prevailing wave and current condition no stresses are transferred to the fresh concrete below the liner equally desirable is to brace the pile suitably. The support for the new pile should come from points which are sufficiently strong and not from liners or piles which are freshly cast. So, when you want to brace you do not brace with another pile which is also fresh you should brace it with a pile which is already strong. The bracing should always be the above the high water level so as to avoid not only current forces, but also wave force to the extent possible Where which level you have to put the bracing. You should not put it uh, very close to the low water level it should be above the high water level otherwise what happens is this uh, wave and current forces act on the bracing that also is transferred. And the bracing in two different directions is preferable to take care of the random nature of the load. The waves and current can come from any direction. So, it is better to provide the bracing in both the directions. So, our analytical study compares well with the force measurement. I think this is for some other thing. Okay, with this we will close this lecture. Thank you.